Welcome to Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality, a show designed to share spiritual insights with you so that you can comprehend the universe and how it functions. You are about to experience raised consciousness. This is a place where spiritual principles are shared with the goal of assisting you to expand your understanding of both the seen and unseen worlds. Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality helps you to discern the timeless truths handed down from wise sages through the ages from the airy fairy nonsense that is being taught today. Now, here is your host, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. Welcome to Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality, the radio show that disseminates esoteric knowledge and common sense spirituality. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, creator of Namology Science, the ability to know all about a person's personality and the soul's purpose simply from a person's name. And you get to experience that this hour if you would like to call in and ask a question. The number here is 202-570-7057. Again, it's 202-570-7057. I ask that you give our producer, Chris, your full name and the state that you're from. And then on air, I will only mention your first name and the state. So the beautiful inspirational song that you just heard is called Shine. It's by D. Lamore. It's D-L-E-M-O-R and dot com. And Shine is also available on all streaming platforms. And as you know, we always close out our show with her song. Now, our topic today is literally I want to share my plans for the radio show for 2022 and introduce our repeating guests for this year. And then what would you like to know? Do you want your name interpreted? Do you wish to know how to improve a relationship? Do you have questions on something that one of my guests has stated? Do you wish to know how something in the universe works? So, again, you can call 202-570-7057 and ask your question. So, as you know, I have six people that I do each year, and they repeat, and they come on once every other month. So, we have the odd month people that are regulars, and we have the even month people that are regulars. Then that gives us the last show of every month where I have an individualized guest that I think is really superb. And then four months a year, there is a fifth Thursday during the month. And this year, during that fifth Thursday of the month, Susan Klopstein and I are going to do call-ins where you can ask questions. Now, Susan Klopstein, as you know, was a regular last year. We're changing some of these out for this year, and I thought it would be fun for you to be able to ask her a question and see what she sees for you, because she is a medical intuitive and very good at being able to look inside your body, see what's going a little askew, and then say what to do about it. And then her prayer work is absolutely incredible, where she goes in, finds out where the origination, which lifetime that that illness or that disease originated or which dimension or which rakia where it originated. And she goes to that place. She yanks it from the beginning of its origination, pulls it through time and space and dissipates it so that you're not going to keep recreating it in future lifetimes and you don't have to deal with it much longer in this lifetime. So we're actually going to do call-ins four times this year. And it'll always be on the fifth Thursday on those months that have them. So we decided to do that because her life is getting busier and busier. And bless you ones for calling her. And I would suggest if you would like to have a session with Susan and have her look at your health, let her see what's coming, what's there, what's starting, and be able to clear it before it really manifests into anything that's troubling, to do so fairly soon Her website is soulwealth.com. And the reason I say that is because I know she's considering a price increase. And so I would say get in now before that price really jumps. Um, It seems to me that every time somebody gets really, really busy and able to slow down their load a little bit, uh, they jump their price so that naturally would take care of that. So I think that's what's coming. Um, And so I would suggest that if you would like to 
experience her work, which I consider very valuable. I've known her now over 20 years. Um, I would say you'd want to get in fairly soon. Again, Susan Klopstein's website is soulwealth.com. So she's going to be here with me on the fifth Thursdays of the month. So our regulars this year are a little bit different than last year. Some are repeats, some are new. So the first month, the first, the odd months, the first week is going to be me where you can just call in and ask questions or I'm going to have one of my regulars or somebody else I think that's very talented with me. So every odd month on the first week, you'll be able to call in and ask questions because I wanted to give you time to do that, to really interact with different people and see them in action. So I think it's a better way of knowing, do I want a reading with that person? Okay, so we're going to do that the first week of every odd month. Then the second week of the odd months is going to be Sandy Anastasi. Now, Sandy Anastasi is known for teaching many, many people that are out there doing incredible work. John Edwards, in his book, has literally given her credit for helping him develop his gifts and his talents and even to recognize that he had them. And how do you develop them? How do you get better with psychic skills? And that he attributes to Sandy Anastasi. She's been in this for a long time. And she knows just about every modality out there from tarot to astrology to mediumship to channeling to just being a psychic to, I mean, it's just amazing her ability and her intelligence and her knowledge of this whole field and being able to use all of that um, during a session. And so she was one of my regulars last year. And she is one of the three repeating regulars out of the six that we're having again this year, simply so that we can tap into her vast knowledge. Now, I will say for Sandy Anastasi, and the website is her name. Sandy is spelled normally, the S-A-N-D-Y. And Anastasi is A-N-A-S-T-A-S-I. So in, in Sandy Anastasi... It's very interesting for her name because uh, it's her website, but she is going to be teaching one of those psychic development classes, just like she gave when John Edwards took it and so many others, if we were going to start spelling names out, that literally develop your psychic abilities. It is a long course. That's why she only offers it once a year. And it takes quite a while because those things don't develop overnight, but she stays with you the entire time and it takes months, but it's really a superb course and it starts at the end of January. So if you're interested, I would suggest you go to her website and go ahead and sign up for that so that you can start doing that. Now, when I look at the world situations today and what's going on, and what's coming. Some of it is really, really positive what's coming. Some of it is just a little bit unnerving. I'm not going to say scary because I don't want to put anybody into fear and I think we're not meant to live our lives in fear. But some of it's a little bit unnerving if you think about the flooding or the earthquakes or the tsunamis or the volcanoes that are going off. I mean, I'm looking around the world. I'm not just focusing on one country. Um, This is going to be a challenging year, and that's why I call it unnerving, because even places where you think, okay, we never get earthquakes here, you can get earthquakes. I mean, I experienced that where I moved. This is not earthquake territory. Now, I grew up in California, experienced plenty of earthquakes. I was living in Tokyo, Japan when a big earthquake went off. And they build their buildings on curved foundations so that it rocks and they don't break during earthquakes. And this building, I mean, it was weird. They're all tall and it rocked for quite a while before it stopped rocking. And it was, to me, a bit unnerving because in California, by the time you identify it's an earthquake, it's pretty much over. But in this one, because the buildings all rock, it feels like it goes for a long time. So we're going to have some earthquakes this year. We're going to have some earth changes this year with weather 
and I, you know, I'm also seeing, I think we're going to have some weather warfare. So anybody that knows about the harp machines, there are seven weather machines around the world. And I think we're going to use that as a weapon or other countries will also be using those as weapons to try to control the weather to either assist an area or to diminish an area. So to me, that is unnerving because you can say, I live in a really good spot, and then all of a sudden it isn't. And it's not because the earth has changed on its own, but because it got this assistance through these weather machines. So we're going to be experiencing some of that this year. Okay. And so um, I was talking about Sandy Anastasi. And she's one that can keep us updated on those type of things, but just has incredible knowledge and incredible skills. So she's going to be on every odd month on the second week, which means she is our guest next week. Okay. And so that's kind of exciting to me as she'll be our guest next week. And next week, um, our topic's going to be how to recognize your own intuition. You know, is where are you receiving what from where and from whom? Okay, and how do you know that what you're receiving is to your highest and best interest, you know, and that it originates in a positive place? And how does one develop one's skills to a higher level of accuracy? Now, I'm doing this this next week just so that she can kind of give us an intro, some enlightenment there, but also to give us an intro so that... Um, we will know what her class on psychic development will entail, okay? Because I just think that's an, an incredible deal. And you know that the other thing I really like about her website is that she offers all of her older classes that she's given in the past, over 40 of them, you heard me correctly, four zero, and she offers those online where you can listen to what she gave at that time when she was teaching a class, and it's all available. She does not do her psychic development as one of these 40, though. And they're there, so on astrology, on tarot, on the Kabbalah, on all kinds of things. It's just amazing. And you get access to that for $200 for the year. And you can also go on a monthly plan and download everything if you want to be cheap about it even though I think it's one of the best things out there for 200 a year. Okay, so that's the next week with Sandy, and she will be the second week of every odd month. So then we've got a brand new person coming and joining us. J.J. Dewey will be the third week of every odd month. So he will be coming on with us on the 20th of this month. And J.J. Dewey is a very prolific writer. He has written so much on his website, which is freeread.com. And he is incredibly knowledgeable. He knows different works, philosophical works, um, biblical works, uh, different religious works, down to the core and what they really mean. Like, for an example, something that he was writing fairly recently was talking about the beast and how that so much of the Bible is written as an allegory. Um, and so when it's written as an allegory, you're saying, what is this really representing? Because this is really every man's story. And so he was talking about the beast, not as an individual or an antichrist as an individual that's going to come and play that role, but more like the beast is any unearned authority. And then he was going through stating where all that unearned authority comes from. It's like any time we're not getting something directly for ourselves, but we're believing something else that's being taught to us and just repeated over and over again. So we give our own power away. That is considered unearned authority. Now, there's a difference in learning from somebody else but you check it first internally to see if it matches with you, if it's good for you, you know, and if you're checking it that way, then it is not an unearned authority because you're taking that part which feels right to you 
and you're discarding the part that isn't. You're not giving away your power to some other source and saying, oh, they said it, so it must be true. You're always checking first what part of this feels right with me, okay? It's when we don't check and we just say, well, the teacher told me, the politician told me, the so-and-so told me, you know, and we're not checking internally first on what feels right. That's giving our power away to somebody else instead of checking with the inner God within, with that piece that's, that's all connected because it's all one great life. And so um, he was talking about that, and then he calls that the beast in the Bible is literally the unearned authority. And he says that the mark on the right hand literally says that's when your actions are just molded because somebody told you to do something. And so you do it without, again, checking first to say, does that feel right to me? That would be like in history where different wars occurred and you were just told to go slaughter this person or grab that person or kill this person or whatever without first checking if that's what was right judgment or not. Okay, so that is through action, whereas when it says the mark of the beast is in the head, that means that are you thinking for yourself or are you thinking what you were told to think and have you been brainwashed? And that would be the mark in the head. So one of the shows we're going to have this year is all about that book of Revelations and how J.J. Dewey sees it. You know, he is an author and a lecturer. He's best known for his books from the Immortal series. Um, And they're the first book in his series, The Immortal, is absolutely free at freeread.com. Okay, it's absolutely free. And you can read that first book there. And he's written numerous other books that he prints on demand for those that want to read more. And there's a portion on the website, which is often referred to as the Keys Archives. And that's where posts to both discussion groups are mentioned and they're archived. And he's very active on there if you ever want to get involved with him. So he's going to be our guest on the third weekend um, of every odd month. And I will continue with the new guests and what we're planning this year right after today's break. Stay tuned. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Are you feeling lost, confused, absolutely clueless, no way out, over, under, or through? Then it's time to have the Light Keepers, through their conduit, Sharon Lynn Wyeth, guide you by shining their light, illuminating the right path for you. Let Sharon share the wisdom of the ancient masters to guide you on what is coming next for you and to show you the silver lining in your current circumstances. Contact Sharon Lynn Wyeth at info at knowthename.com for a joyful, info-packed Light Keepers session. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served thanks to people like you. 
Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 food banks strong. Welcome back to Luminescence, Common Sense Spirituality. You're with your host, Sharon Lynn Wyatt, and we're going through what's planned for this year. So now we're going to go to the the second, the even months of the year. The first month, again, the first week is going to be me and a guest where you can call in and ask questions. The second week um, will be Sandy and Stacy, and the third week will be J.J. Dewey. Then the fourth week will always be one of our special guests. Our first guest in January is going to be Gail Minogue. She's a trendsetter. She'll be talking about what trends are coming out and interpreting those trends in a very spiritual way to say where mankind is moving. So that ought to be real interesting. Then we're going to look at the even month. So that starts with February and then April. And anyway, it's every other month starting with the even ones. And we're going to have one of the guests that we had last year uh, repeated again. She's again, we repeating half of last year's guests this year. And this one is Susan Rowland. And she's our native Chicagoan. She's a medium. She's a psychic. She's incredibly talented. She charges less uh, fees for her services than anybody I know with that kind of skill level and talent. And so she is just a remarkable. She's very direct. You know, she doesn't beat around the bush. She says things in a kind manner, but she's not concerned with feelings or your reaction. She's more concerned with making sure you hear what spirit wants you to hear. And so she gives a lot of information in a very short time. It just rolls off of her. Uh, My mom recently called me and said, who should I get a reading from this year? She gives herself one every January. And I recommended Susan Rowland. And I said, I think it'll just be interesting for you to hear what she has to say. Um, Susan has had these unique gifts of hers, and she helps people uh, that are in professional places like policemen, like firemen, like that sort to to help find people, to help heal people. Um, One of my friends that came out here to help me when I broke my two bones in the leg and my ankle Um, A week after she was here helping me, uh, she had a horse accident and was in the hospital, and they told her she was now going to be a paraplegic. And I immediately called Susan and said, uh, what can you tell me? You know, what can I tell her about this? And Susan let me know that her spine was bruised, not permanently damaged. It would take about two years to heal, but she'd start feeling you know, some feeling in her outer extremities by Christmas. And so I let her know that, my friend. And a month after this accident took place, the doctor said, you know, your spine is not permanently damaged. It is just heavily bruised. Exactly what Susan had said a month earlier, which just really she felt better because Susan had told her, but then she really felt good because the doctors confirmed it. And she has started getting feelings in her hands, um, at the, her outer extremities on her hands. She can feel them, can't move them very well, but she can feel them uh, by Christmas. So Susan was just right on, and it just flies off and is so quick when she sees things and, and what she's able to say. But she doesn't mince words. So if you're highly sensitive to how something is said or the directness of the information, then you may not want to call her. Um, she's one of my favorites. Of course, everybody, the, my regulars are all my favorites. Um, and she's a favorite because she's going to tell you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear, but the information is incredibly valuable in helping you go forward. And she has such great intentions and she's a very kind person. So she's not intentionally trying to say something mean or to hurtful. She's just very direct. And I know that there's some letters in the alphabet that that's hard to hear. Okay. When somebody is that direct. Um, Anyway, she will be the first week of every even month. 
So we'll first be talking with her on February 20, um, on February 3rd this year. And our topic is going to be predictive abilities. And how does foreknowledge and prediction work? Is there a difference between predictions and prophecies? What fields, you know, um, really use predictive skills today? And how do we develop them and able to being able to predict what's coming next? Um, I, we thought that would be really interesting to discover because at the beginning of this time period with our world and the way it is, it's very helpful to be able to see what's coming next so that you can stay in a positive attitude and know how to assist the ones that you care about along with all of your neighbors. Then in the second week of every even month, okay, we are going to have um, a guest that's a new one for us. And this is Lincoln Gergar. And I heard about Lincoln from people in Australia that I work with frequently. And that was one of their favorites. And so I gave Lincoln a try and was just amazed at his clarity and his precision and how positive everything comes out. He can give you the worst news, and he says it in such a positive way that it's easy to understand. He works by donation. He has a minimum donation and a maximum donation, and you get to pick a number in between what feels right for you, uh, which I think is an interesting way of doing that. And we're going to be talking about in February about free will. And do only humans have free will? Do all species have free wills? Um, what's the energy behind us asking to make our will in alignment with God's will? You know, is it against God to try to manipulate or, you know, maneuver somebody else's will? That's going to be our topic in February. But he has very interesting perspectives he has a very gentle voice. I don't know how to say that in such a way that you just hear his voice and your whole body energetically just starts calming down. I mean, it's just incredible. And his information is so accurate and so very, very clear. And so I've had some readings with him because you know that I check everybody out before they come on my show. I only want to give you the best of the best. And so Lincoln Gergar is going to be uh, with us on the second week of every even month. And his website, if you want to check him out early, is channelinghigherself.com. Again, it's channelinghigherself.com. And when you spell channeling, just know that it's got two L's. As you add the I-N-G, you've got to add an extra L. And I want to backtrack for a minute and let you know Susan uh, Roland's website is, is her name, Susan, and then Roland is R-O-W-L-E-N.com. Okay, so Lincoln's going to be new with us this year, one of our new people. We want to um, have him give his perspectives and his understandings on different topics. I just love listening to him. I find that I learn so very, very much. And so uh, he'll be joining us, like I said, the second week of the of the um, even months. And then on the third week of the even months, we're going to have returning with us, the third person that's going to return with us is Pat Robertson Rice. And Pat Robertson Rice, as you once have heard that have been listening to this show for a while, is a fabulous educator. I gave her a topic and she's off and running with it. Okay. And it doesn't matter what I give her as a topic. She goes in and finds out so much information all ahead of time. She always has so many more notes and things she could tell us than what there's time for. She gives classes. She gives individual readings. I want to remind you all that she's the one that when I was living in China, I had heard about and gave her a call. And the first part of the reading was so accurate when she went through the different ages of what was going to happen and the strengths and the talents. She does a lot of what nameology science does. She just gets it in a different manner than what I do. But I found her so accurate. And then I asked questions afterwards. And I thought, mm, can't believe that one. Yep, don't, don't think that one's going to happen. And literally nine months later, everything she had said came true exactly the way she had said it, even though I had discounted it from my questions. Because then I was moving back from China and I said, eh, 
you know, every space in that suitcase was viable because you only get two suitcases coming home. And I wasn't going to take up any extra room with anything. So I was listening to the tape over again and was just amazed at her 100% accuracy there. So Pat Robertson Rice is going to be back with us again. If you guys want to go to her website, it's spiritualbeginnings101.com. She's known for her classes that she keeps very small. She does them online, and you just learn a tremendous amount. And a lot of times she will do an individual class for people if she feels like that's what's needed for them at this time. Her fees also are incredibly reasonable. Um, I like that. I like to have accessibility for people that are on stricter budgets. And I think that's because I was a school teacher for so long. I always measured everything by that, what we got paid as a teacher. Okay, so she's um, very reasonable and very, very knowledgeable. So she's going to be coming on the third week of every even month. Then on the fourth week, remember the months that I have my special guests. And so our first special guest is going to be Julie Salen. Now, she was a special guest last year also. She talks with horses and animals and is just amazing what she's able to see. And so I wanted to have her back again, even though... If you look at who's coming back this year, since the entire year is already planned and all the guests lined up, I have three that are returning from last year because I just thought they offered so much that we needed to keep going. And then I have nine that are new. And I think that'll be really exciting. I've been working this year on finding really good people for you. And so that gives the foundation of what we're going to be doing this year. Our topics, our interest, our focus this particular year is all going to be on how do you get there yourself? How do you do this for you? What kind of knowledge do you need? Uh, what kind of techniques do you need? What kind of practice do you need? Uh, what will work for you individually versus this works for most people? Uh, let's develop your own gifts and talents. Let's get you to that higher level of consciousness. And in regards to that, you're going to find a new piece on my newsletter. The newsletter always comes out and lets you know who's on the same day that the newsletter comes out, who's on with me. And then there's a section that says, here's, you know, if you missed it, this is what you missed on last week's show. And here's a link to it. And then you get a, this is what you're going to get on next week's show. This is who's coming. And then you also, as you scroll down, you'll see what shows that I've been a guest on and how to get to books and all of those things or how to sign up for an, a reading with me. But the end of the newsletter has always had something on names. It's like my way of communicating with you and sharing. Well, we're going to add a regular feature that's going to start showing up on the next newsletter. And that is, what do we need to do this week to help raise our consciousness? And so this new section will always say, okay, this week, this is what we want to focus on, because if we focus on that this week, that will help raise our consciousness. And so we're going to do that every week. So you can have a new focus for the week. You can print it out and pin it up, you know, put it on the bathroom there, you know, tape it to the refrigerator, whatever you need to do. And just remind yourself that these are all steps that are very simple very short, fairly quick, because I think everybody's busy, that we can do on a regular basis that will build throughout the year so that you will be raising your consciousness as you focus in that regard. And I've already worked those out for the entire year, so they build so that you'll have more abilities by the end of the year than what you have at the beginning of the year. So I thought that would be fun to add for this particular year. Actually, I'm looking forward to 2022. Because 2022 has a lot of promise in it. It doesn't say it's going to be easy, but it has a lot of promise. It's kind of like saying you're going to have to go to school, but you'll eventually graduate. It's not going to be easy necessarily to pass some of those classes and to take those courses. But at the end, you'll be really glad you did. And that's kind of like what 2022 is going to be like. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. When we come back from this next break, stay tuned.
A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Vox Novus, the new voice. Vox Novus, the new dimension. Vox Novus, thought and movement leaders who will share from their experience and offer tools to help us navigate our rapidly changing world. My name is Victor Furman. Join me every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern on Own Times Radio for Vox Novus, the new voice. Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. The why is hidden in your name. Sharon Lynn Wyeth has created a scientific way of deciphering your name to reveal your contract for this lifetime. And your name even specifies the seven areas that are subsets of your soul's overall goal. Your name identifies who you are to both yourself and others. What does your name say about you? Contact Sharon Lynn Wyatt at info at knowthename.com for your stunning name review. If I could be you. And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way. To get inside. Each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Luminescence, Common Sense Spirituality. Before I tell you about 2022, I would like to take some of those phone calls that we've had been coming in. Thank you so much for your patience. Pauline from New York, it's good to hear from you again. What can I do for you? It's like, surprise, you had call-ins. I haven't been listening on live, but I really um, enjoy I thought you having the scene speak, you know, the guests, and I found out, no, but that's okay. I'll go back and listen to it. That was last um, week. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it's my fault. I don't even read. Yeah, I don't even read the newsletter. I have so much going on. I've been learning classes and, uh, like you saying, upping my uh, my consciousness. I've been working on that myself. but. There were some guests that you had that I really highly recommend. Um, I didn't actually um, use, have uh, occasion to to have uh, Sherry on on Chara. Uh, is it her, her first name was Sherry? I don't remember. I just know her I last name. Sherry on Chara. She'll that be I had, uh, one time oh, this year. Uh-huh. But, yeah, because I had to ask her an extra question because I know she removes the va- vaccines from people, but I always I was wondering if she you had experience with all of them. And she shared the Moderna was the worst. And that was a nice surprise to hear because I always thought Pfizer was the worst. But anyways, I, ha- I, ha- I will pass on her information when somebody tells me they, they regret having that, those, those vaccines. And that'll be her. She's like the perfect person to send people to. And the other person that I, you had this man on so long ago, but then afterwards, other people started having him and I started seeing his name again and again. And then I finally went and did the... Um, it's Tom Palladino, his uh, yeah. sailor bike. Oh, my God. Yeah. I did almost every program there so far, and I I have not given him, um, a, what you call it, testimonial, but I, I experienced it all, and I and I tried to integrate and try to figure out how what to share with what happened with each one, and, um, it's, and now I have to go back and do them again because I only did them once or, or – um, so I, I feel like I at least need a couple more times to get my cell memory going. Like it's almost, a, I don't know, not everybody can do that. There's certain people, if you don't do the work and you don't, you know, take the weight, get rid of your shadow stuff and all that, then you don't really, you know, your cells don't like automatically self heal so fast. But once you, you know, do it a few times, I have a feeling my cellular memory will remember how to heal to do all the things that a lot of his programs do. And actually, it's very interesting things I have to share with him 
But, um, yeah, so I'm really glad of all the – now you're going to have even more gifts. That's going to be fabulous. I can't wait. Yeah. And i gotta, I, I, I got to go back to you because it's been over a year, I think, and the, the DVD that you sent me, somehow every time anybody sends me anything through the mail, it gets erased. So I have to redo everything again with you because I don't remember any of the seven, whatever it was, the seven <laughs> lessons. I wrote it somewhere, but I can't find all my sc- scrap papers. I, I have to really look at every piece of paper, and I'm not going to do that. It's I'm worth it. I'm hoping that you use the email that you get your reading from and you downloaded it so it's somewhere on your computer. Um, unfortunately, my only computer is my cell phone, and it deletes all my mail after a month. So unless it's in a regular mail, in my if I went to a landline, I mean, a, 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 one of those, uh, what do you call it? The uh, not on a cell phone, or so if I can go to a you know, I get the library and look, maybe I have all the emails in there, and it's just in there, and I didn't, they don't erase that, I don't think. So, well, you my, can't download it again, um, it would have to have been downloaded because it disappears after six days. We do that for your own right. protection, okay? Well, I, I, I don't mind redoing it, and you probably already have, or maybe you don't keep the notes from it even. I don't, but it's just as all. easy to figure it out again. <laughs> okay, and then I have to do it extra time because I have a lot more questions. I, I feel it's not fair for me to ask you, but maybe if I ask you, because I've already given you my name and the whole thing, and you told me what to do, but the spelling is the, the situation now. It's the name that I'm going to go by. It's a spiritual name. It's S-O-L, and I used to spell it I-A, and it just sounds like liar, like a L-I-A. <laughs> I don't want people to call me so liar, but I thought so Leah sounds prettier, and it doesn't have the word liar in it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. But it doesn't have so, the so R. So stick an H on the end. Yeah, and then and if I spell it L-I-A-H, would you be able to pronounce it as a, an, would you say so Leah, or would you say so liar? Um, I would have to be taught how to say it. But okay, so I could actually put it, it. Some people put hyphenate and tell you how to pronunciate it, right? That's how people do it sometimes now. Well, in case you, I will also, you know, like my name well, looks I, like Sharon on paper, but it's pronounced Sharon. So you just yeah. educate people and then they'll just learn, oh, this is how you say that name. And then okay. if I'm corresponding with somebody, sometimes for the very first time, I will literally put underneath my name pronounced because right. my last name doesn't say doesn't look like what it sounds like either. So I yeah, will you just guys have to always correct them because people always call you Sharon. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting though when you look at that. I don't look at that as a as a bad thing because no, it's a telemarketer it's, telling, it's, it's, it's like a conversation obvious. starter, right? You you have you right. can talk to people. Right. And then if somebody, if you correct them and you have to keep correcting them, then it means they don't care enough to learn it right. Oh, yeah. And so you just through natural attrition, you say, I don't need these people in my life. They don't even care enough to learn how to say my name. And it's not like it's a hard to pronounce. It's just to remember that it's different. Especially if we listen right? to you enough. Yep. If I listen to you enough on your shows and I start calling you Sharon, you would probably say, what the heck? <laughs> exactly. So it's it's just, you know, and you would do the same thing with yours. But because that A-H is there, because you're adding that H, that adds so much spirituality that you're going to want. Yeah. You know, that's going to help you in that goal yeah. of constantly gaining. Just the sighing. Ah, that sounds really nice, right? Ah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay, thank you. That's the the one question I do have to ask you many business questions of when I finally do something, but that might be I don't know if I could afford that rate, but I still hope that you let me ask those questions on my extended version of the uh, private with you. Okay, <laughs> thank I, you so I, much. I the other suggestion with you before you before we're going to my next call is that you may want to think about where you have the I to make it an E. Yeah, that's reason what I was I thinking of doing it. Because then people would get how to pronounce it right off the bat. But the main reason is the O's and the I's develop internal conflict within you. So you don't really want an O and an I in the same name if it can be avoided. Right. I, I have almost okay. all the vowels again with the E and the A and the O. I'm just missing the I, which is not. That's in my first name, my real regular name. And that was interesting. Right. So it would still be there, you know, on a subtle basis. 
So I would think about S-O-L-E-A-H. That's what I was planning on saying. I, was, I forgot to say that to you. And guess what? Um, a healer who works on me told me that the A-U in my name is a really powerful. He wanted me to practice the OM. It's the A-U-M. So it's A-U-M. And that's like the yes. power, somehow that was, and I never heard, you probably talked about adult when you put two the initials. Um, that, so, yeah, that's together. how they do it over in India. Oh, my goodness. Okay. All right, that's right. You know a lot of the multicultural stuff as well. Okay. Yeah, so that, that's how they were doing it there. It's Aum type of thing. So you're doing that A and that U, and it helps you get there. I mean, once you do that enough, it's that vibration of those that help you go into meditation easier. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. I better let you go because you have a lot of people waiting, I'm sure. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Shirley, it's your turn. It's been a while. Thank you for calling in. Sure. Uh, my two questions are about the advertising that goes on at the beginning of your show. And um, yeah. would you talk more about what you consider airy-fairy nonsense? That's my first question. The second one is if you could clarify what light keepers do. Okay. So let me do them in reverse order. Okay. A light keeper is, the, is, is what I have named the group of beings or the entities that when I get out of the way that I get a lot of my answers from. And I have uh, been meditating since I, was an eight, since I was 18. So that is now literally 50 years. <laughs> okay. And these are the guys that started visiting me when I was 13. Okay. And when I was reading uh -huh. the Bible every night, because I wanted to read it for myself, they were the voice over my left shoulder and they would say, well, you need to know the culture at the time, or this is an allegory, or this is, um, you know, this is a story to get this idea across, or they have changed it over time. It used to say this, like for an example, it used to say in the original uh, writings that the, that they were going to put something in your body instead of on your body like on your forehead on your right hand the beast uh, the original said in in your hand and in the forehead so uh, they were correcting it as we went along and i was so naive at 13 that i honestly thought that if you read the bible every night that then everybody got the voice with it you got the audio edition while oh. you were reading <laughs> yeah blessed blessed you <laughs> you know so that's my group that I go in and talk with to get people answers when they're asking me questions that are, the answers are not in the name. Okay. Cause okay. the name is your blueprint. Okay. But then you may want details on something else, you know? And so I, I get those four people from the light keepers. Okay. Okay. So and you recommend Eric, people start with, with the name and then go to light I, keepers. Yes, the answer surely is yes, start with the name because it gives you such a solid foundation. And then after you've had a thorough name reading, go to the light keepers because now it's going to be, okay. you know, you've already got that foundation. Now it's going to be everyday stuff and what's coming next. Okay. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. Then thank you. The airy fairy is I hear a lot of teachings or things that people believe that I look at him and I go, that doesn't even make common sense. And it's as above, so below, which means that what works here has worked there and vice versa, that we're in congruence. And so when I hear things like flat earth, I hope I'm not pushing anybody's buttons there. I just think that is so airy fairy. All you have to do is get on a boat and start going out <laughs> and you start seeing the horizon curve. And things are disappearing because right. you're going around a corner, you know, over uh, from a curve. So we're round. Right. You know, right. We're not flat. And so I look at so much stuff that's out there that because people have a really good marketing campaign or they're very charismatic or whatever, that people are buying into false ideas. And mm -hmm. remember that we're at the end times in the Bible which is the times, the ending of duality and the beginning of oneness, okay? Where we're all going to get mm -hmm. to experience that. That's why we picked this time to come through, even though we're going through some garbage in the way. 
So since we're at the end times or the end of duality, it's letting us know that from the Bible and what they did leave in it is that there were going to be a lot of false prophets. Mm -hmm. And so my whole goal with that, not that airy fairy stuff is that you're not going to hear airy fairy stuff on my show and that um, we're going to give you the real scope and how it really works. Okay. Sounds good. And that's what I mean by that. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Some of us might not know the difference. So I would love to have you do a whole show on that. Like what you think some of those things are, unless that's um, putting too much light on negativity, negativity, you know? Well, the, the show I did on the Pledarin, I did in my newsletter, a whole huge article on dissecting what was said and what why you want to throw what out mm -hmm. okay i saw that and periodically yeah. i'll yeah. do that but the the know the name know the health is in its last i mean it's just taken a long time it's it's going to be coming out very very shortly and then i've already got the next four chapters done on this which will be my sixth book and it's going to go through all that this is airy fairy this is what it really is here's what's being oh. taught but this what the truth is and that's what my sixth uh, book is going to be all about because i'll be through with the i'm through with the no, the know the name series okay good to know thank you <laughs> i appreciate yeah, it you're welcome. i appreciate you thank you so much oh i appreciate you shirley thank you for calling in and as you're always welcome. time flies on this show i want to thank everybody for listening i'm excited about who i'm bringing you this year like I said, the entire year is scheduled. I had somebody call me and say, oh, can I get on your show? And I thought, maybe in 2023, I'm already scheduled. I've locked everybody in because so many of the people that I want to bring with you and share with you are very popular. And so you book them clear ahead. So all that booking is done. And I'm so excited about this year. I'm looking forward to it and all of us progressing in our own race consciousness. And like always, we end our show with the music shine which i love by d lamore and so um that's what we'll do this time also this is sharon lynn wyeth signing off And all that she 